Today, I'm going to discuss a very, very interesting topic, denudation chronology. It is the very important topic of geomorphology and uh, it's, it's based on concept of the normal cycle of erosion, geographic cycle. So denudation chronology, sequence of the erosion, how a landform, elevated landform passes through various stages of the erosion. That is called chronology. So it can be defined as a, the denudation chronology is to identify, date and interpret planation surfaces developed in past cycles and sub-cycles of erosion. So this is a, a definition given by R.J. Small. So the denudation chronology identify the date, <coughs> interpret the planation surfaces. Planation means the denuded surface, eroded surface by the present cycle or maybe by sub-cycle. The denudation chronology, you can see with the a very simple diagram. As a beginner, the student you can see the diagram from the surface there is upliftment of the surface. See the left side, the upliftment, the point, the place where upliftment takes place, that point, that surface called prima rumpf. This word prima rumpf was coined by Walter Penck, a German gemophologist. So the, when the surface, the crust of the earth, affected by endogenic force and moves up, that is called upliftment. Upliftment become weak, endogenic forces are over, then there is only erosion. If the only erosion, then the elevated surface eroded away and it goes down. Height decreases, absolute height decreases, relative height decreases and finally at the end of the erosion, relief disappear, surface become even surface, plain surface that is called end rumpf or penny plane. The term penny plane coined by the great gemophologist William Moore Davis and uh, end rumpf, the relic surface end rumpf, the term coined by Walter Pank. So the cycle of erosion here at this point is completed. Let me tell you that it all depends on the endogenic process, how long endogenic process continue, then the cycle will be much longer and if endogenic force upliftment stops early then cycle will be short term, cycle will be short. At the end, it got the sea level that is penny plane or the end drum. So friends, you can see the planation surfaces, denudation chronology is very much similar like human life. 
very much similar like human life. In human life, there is a young stage, youth stage and the old stage. Similarly, you can see the diagram. So, when the upliftment takes place, that is called young stress. Upliftment is going on, erosion is going on. Then when it gets maximum height, its maxima, the maximum relief, they call youth stress. And finally, when end of the cycle, surface become low, relief disappears, then it is called old stage. Similarly, similarly, you can see in the human life, at the time of the birth of the baby, at the time of the birth of the baby, you can see the young, then it becomes youth, and finally, finally, it becomes old. Same is the cycle. Young stays, youth stays, and the old stays. So the height increases, height increases from childhood, young stays, to the youth stays. Relief increases, body expands, and then, then, it comes to the old stays, where everything, everything goes down, everything goes down through the, everything goes down through the ages, erosion and at the end, at the end, it becomes old stays and erosion completes. Similarly, the life ends, life ends at the later stage. Same way, derivation chronology describes the history. It is a historical approach, which involves description of landforms evolution through successive stages of geological time or cyclic time involving longer geological time and larger spatial scale. Friends, like a history, every land, every surface have its own history. So, derivation chronology is a historical approach. It describes the evolution of landforms with successive stages of geological time or cyclic time involving longer geological time and larger spatial scale. The geological time is too long because the erosion based on the structure, process and stress. So, the process is how strong, which process? It may be water, it may be air, it may be glacier, it may be wind. Structure, what kind of rock? And what is the stress? So, three, this is called trio of the Davis, Davisian model to describe the erosion, cycle of erosion. Therefore, it covers a longer geological time and larger spatial scale. It is not a description, a discussion of a landform. It is a description of the surface, which involves very large geographical area. The chronological or historical approach of landforms study involves the basic concepts that there is sequential change in landforms through time. Very interesting. The study involves basic concept that there is a sequential changes in landforms through the time. Erosion is a long process. 
So, gradually the surface gradually surface changes with the erosion. So, it takes his sequential change in the land form through the time. The denudation chronology is based on the principle of uniformitarianism. This is very, very important concept of uniformitarianism. The friends, there is a constant changes on the earth through the endogenic forces. Endogenic forces brings relief, heterogeneity on the earth, while external forces create denudation, brings homogeneity through the process of erosion. This concept was first described by Scottish geomorphologist James Hutton, who had provided the concept of the uniformitarianism, cyclic nature of earth history. So, history of the earth crust affected by long ge geological time having different sequential changes on the earth's surface. So, the endogenic forces, exogenic forces and their longer duration sequential effect that is called cyclic nature of earth history, uniformitarianism. And also the denudation chronology based on the palimpsest topography. It is a palimpsest topography and Davisian model of cyclic evolution of landforms. The history of earth surface is very, very old. So, how many time a surface affected by upliftment? How many time the process of erosion, the cycle has taken place? All that imprints of the surface, how many times it has gained the height, how many times it has been eroded away. So, the residual imprints of the surface described in denudation chronology. So, it is a definitely Davisian model describes this, the cyclic evolution of landforms, the detailed historical analysis of the James Hutton and the Davisian model described in a better way about the cyclic evolution of the landforms. Denudation chronology is based on the concept of palimpsest topography. Friends, I would like to mention here palimpsest topography, which means such a surface which bears the imprints of geographical processes during past geological periods after partially erased initial imprints that is called landscapes in the beginning. So, as a, as a layman, I can describe it is in different way about palimpsest topography. So, palimpsest topography, topography is like a manuscript, manuscript which has been written, erased and rewritten several times. So, palimpsest topography means similarly the denudation chronology is based on palimpsest topography, a surface which is at prima rumpf, after erosion it becomes end rumpf and again if the upliftment takes place at the same point, same surface, again the end rumpf becomes prima rumpf. So, this is cycle. So, whatever the elevation whatever the land forms 
surface developed in the first cycle that is reduced by the second cycle, the third cycle. So, this is called palimpsest. How many times the same surface have, has been converted as a primer rump to end rump, then again primer rump, again end rump. So, it, this is refers to the palimpsest topography. As a layman, I can give you a better example. Suppose we are on the sea beach and there are two kids playing with the sea beach and they are drawing some figure of the animals with their finger and the first child draw a shape of the elephants and the second child does not like and he erased except the trunk of the elephant. Then first child draw the figure of horse. The second child again erased except the tail of the horse. Then finally, the first child had drawn the figure of a cow. The second child again erased except the horn of the cow. Now, we visit the same place. What you will see? We will find that there is a remains of the three animals. Say so, there is a trunk of the elephant, there is a tail of the horse, there is a horn of the cow. So, we can easily perceive, understand the children has drawn the figures of a elephant, of a horse, of a cow. Similarly, in the denudation chronology, it is a palimpsest topography. So, we study the present, we study the present on the basis of the past. So, the detailed analysis of the present land surface done on the history of the past. Therefore, therefore, the palimpsest topography represents complex topographic features, complex topographic features of a region which has been developed by the geomorphological processes and modifies the previous geomorphological features partially destroyed by succeeding processes and reduces of new relief on older surfaces several times. So, the features are partially destroyed by succeeding processes and reproduces of new relief and older surface several times. This is the uh, palimpsest analysis of the surface. Similarly, the earth surface crust erased then elevated, erased, elevated several times. Those historical approaches we have, when you go to the field, we find the remnants, the surfaces, through that we explain the surface, the history of the surface that is called denudation chronology. In the studies of denudation chronology, an attempt is made to reconstruct the geomorphic history of the region concerned on the basis of present and remnant landforms. This is very, very interesting topic you can find. The derivative chronology an attempt is made to reconstruct the geomorphic history, reconstruct the geomorphic history of the surface on the basis of remnants, residual, old, relict surface. Uh, today, then the evidences of the surface describes its, its past. So, this is the dictum of the very famous geomorphologist John Hutton, James Hutton. James Hutton had presented that present is key to the past present is key to the past on the basis of present evidences, on the basis of present surface, we can explain 
its history. The denudation chronology is the historical analysis of present, surface, relief, land, all that description over a longer geological time, over larger spatial scale on the basis of the present is key to the past. Friends, there are so many evidences which are used in denudation chronology, like evidences of drainage development, river capture, relic surfaces, past tectonic events, the coastal lands, position of the cliff, different there are landforms these are the tools of the studies of denudation chronology the denudation chronology based on the evidences evidences are present today and describe past history of the earth surface so in the river capturing the river which is captured is become dry. The river which captured have become more volume of water. But if you go to the denudation chronology, if you go to the history, one can easily find that there was a river and after the capturing the river basin become dry. Similarly, we can find that the, the Saraswati and the Yamuna glacier. So, Yamunotri glacier had captured the Saraswati glacier and river Saraswati become dry. River Saraswati is no more. It is partially, it is inland drainage, inland drainage, seasonal drainage, river Ghaggar passing through Punjab. That is the remnants of the river Saraswati and today the amount of water of river Saraswati drains in river Yamuna. Similarly, the cliff of the coast affected by erosion and its shift towards continent, its remnants stack, the presence of the stack in the sea describe the past that where exactly the cliff was found earlier. Friends, the evidences are the tools of denudation chronology, description of earth surface, its cycle and sub-cycle. The derivation chronology have so many weaknesses, limitations. Friends, due to unknown events and their responses described on the basis of very limited known information and evidences the approach of the denudation chronology is highly deductive and suffers various perceptible weaknesses, demerits, weaknesses having the historical approach based on history. The information about the longer time larger geographical area, the evidences which are collected may not be 100 percent true. For example, dating of erosion surfaces is highly speculative as valid geological evidences are not easily available. So, when we date the beginning of the erosion till the end of the erosion, it covers several million years and the presence even the, with the science of carbon 14 dating, how long you can go, we can find the age of the rocks, but it is very difficult that what were the landforms with various time. So, landforms may be speculative. 
it, it may be guessed, but to say exactly is difficult. So dating of erosion surfaces is highly speculative because it's very long history, as valid geological evidences are not easily available. Then the old erosion surfaces and remnant forms have been so greatly modified by the subsequent processes that it becomes very difficult to find out their original forms and initial heights. Friends, I repeat it, longer geological time and larger spatial scale. So the old erosion surfaces and remnants form have been greatly modified by the cycle, by the sub-cycle. Therefore, it's very, very difficult to find out their original forms and initial heights. For example, for example, I can give you certain uh, evidences, certain examples at this point you can understand easily. Like at present, Himalayas are young fold mountain. And we measure the height of the Mount Everest, 8,848 meter. But we cannot say what was the exact highest point of the Aravali, say about 500 million years back. Let me tell you evidences. Aravali having a number of glacial eroded boulders and the height of Aravali is less than 2000 meter at the latitude say about 20 degree north latitude at the height of 2000 meter there is no ice there is no glacier but it have glacial eroded evidences of the landforms it means in the past the height of Aravali could have been more than 5000 6000 or even 8000 meter but what was the exact height we can't say because it is speculative we can't say we can only say that definitely the at the young stage of the Aravali youth stage of the Aravali its height was more than glacial level more than snow line means more than 5000 6000 meter so the denudation chronology having so many weaknesses say it succeeds in explaining directly only very small parts of the existing landscape it is based on longer geological time and larger geographical space but if you go to the field we see very small part of the surface namely the fragments of the former erosion surface which have been dissected and almost totally destroyed by more recent cycle friends the one cycle reduces the imprints of the other cycle so the surface on which approximation is taking place erosion is taking place so process of erosion is going on modifying developing different kind of landforms for example if the present cycle where is a humid climate and the the erosion done by river so river will form the fluvial landforms say valleys other fluvial landforms waterfalls will form the valley in valley meanders and say after one million year the climate change and become desert area same land now affected by wind erosion process have changed the present process destroy the evidences of the past cycle therefore it is very difficult to say the exact description exact 
historical landforms, heights, and all that. And that is true over a very small piece of land. But denudation chronology described a longer geological time, largely spatial scale. They you can see in the figure, this is one, one example I'd like to tell you that see from this photograph, one can say that the river, river which is which was draining at this valley, due to valley deepening, it has formed different stairs. Now see the present flow of the water. The present flow of the water, you can see the accumulation of the boulders along the river bank and one, two, three, four level of the river you can see at this present figure. So one can construct the history that the river which is flowing at present valley earlier it was flowing to this place and now, now it is flowing to this place and earlier it was flowing at the other height. So sequential changes with longer geological time and a time will come when this entire surface the mountain will be eroded away and form the end of the cycle of erosion. They will construct its history. We describe them. So, see the valley in this second figure. In this valley, the river deepening is going on and different strayers have been formed. So, it gives history the present describing the past and the dictum of the James Hutton present is key to the past. Friends, these are the evidences of the uh, denudation chronology, the studies of the denudation chronology and the weaknesses in the denudation chronology. Then you can find the after the denudation chronology, what are the surfaces are found? That is called planation surface, erosion surface. So, planation is a process of carrying away the rock so as to produce an even surface. When the surface become even, plain, erosion completed. Friends, so planation done by different forces. Planation done by different processes. Therefore, the planation surfaces have also different types. It may be done by um, wind action, it may be done by water, it may be done by glacier, other forces. So, planation surfaces form through the process of planation or denudation. And the erosion cycle is completed, then at the end of the erosion, the surface remain left is planation surface. Let me tell you very clear in your mind that it is not a particular landform. It does not have any relief. Reliefs are over. Once the cycle of erosion is completed, the vertical relief has become horizontal on the ground. Then the surface called planation surfaces, Ex having except few imprints, residuals, relict surfaces. So that relict surface itself is planation surface. We can see the planation surface. One example I would like to give you. One, one example you can see the high relief, high relief with the vertical valleys covering different gorge, canyons, waterfalls, deep valleys in the youngest trees. Then process of erosion begins. In the process of erosion, the lowering of the height begins. 
surface lowering down is going down and from valley deepening it moves to the valley widening and finally at the end at the end the erosion is over cycle is over relief is over then it is called planation surface you can see in the figure the see look the relief in the youth stage very high relief in the youth stage then gradually relief decreases in the in the mature stage and finally at the end in the old stage see the surface become horizontal which was vertical in the youth become horizontal in the old stage so at the end at the end and the old stage it is called planation surface planation surface describe the surface of a faint relief which is the end product of all processes of planation by erosion say it describe the surface of faint relief means eroded old stage old surface relict surface or you can say end product of all processes of planation by erosion so whether the planation surfaces have been completely formed or not depends on the duration for which the process has been active friends it's very important to understand the planation surfaces how long how long process is working how long process is active means the process has completed its duration or it has been interrupted means one process erosion is going on denudation is going on then all of sudden it is again uplifted there is a interruption by the endogenic force so that interruption interruption will form different surface therefore whether the whether the cycle is completed or not if yes completed how long was the duration of the time so the surface describes different kind of erosion surfaces planation surfaces formed by various forces the remnants of old planation surfaces at different altitudes provide clues of their approximate age and the number of times the denuding agencies have tried to base level the surface this the remnants the the the, the uh, residuals of the surface it describe what altitude it is found at what level it is found so that description of the surface about the agencies and about the agents how many times how many times the agency have tried to gain the base level so it keeps a kind of relict surface erosion surface on which the cycle has completed friends planation surfaces help in understanding the historical evolution of the landscape and its present form we have discussed it in the denudation chronology that planation surfaces help in understanding the historical evolution of the landscape and its present form so historical analysis Desc description of the history of any surface so there are there are various types of planation surfaces planation surfaces or the om omnibus term or relict surfaces means end product of the cycle so different geomorphologists have explained different types of erosion surfaces 
and they are mostly found in the humid climate. The it, erosion surfaces like penny plain, end drum, paddy plain, pine plain, exhumed plain called exhumed surface, etch plain, stock work and stetelfler, and stroth and burr. Friends, these are these are the major erosion surfaces, planation surfaces found in different parts of the world. We will go detail about the planation surfaces, we will explain one by one. So, we will discuss first the, the penny plane. Penny plane, you must have studied the cycle of erosion of Davis. The term penny plane described by Davis in the Davisian model. So, William O. Davis has described the geographic cycle. Geographic cycle is a period of time during which an uplifted land mass passes through various stages of the erosion and at the end, at the end the erosion completed and surface become horizontal base level at the end at the end of the erosion the surface called penny plane the, the surface eroded surface is penny plane and the residual residual known as monod knock residuals known as monod knock so in the davisian model cycle of erosion divided in three stages young stage youth stage and the old stage you can see the youth stage covers maximum the old stage covers maximum duration length of the geological time because declining slope declining slope gradient reduces the intensity of the erosion therefore Erosion becomes slow at the old stage and takes a long time. At the end, at the end of the erosion, the surface called penny plain and the residuals called monod knock. What I can give example, the eastern coast of India having the best example of penny plain and monod knocks. They the coastal plain of Tamil Nadu, coastal plain of Tamil Nadu having penny plain and the having residuals, present residual small hills in the form of the residuals, the relict surface. So, at the different geographical cycle passing the sequential changes in the land form, the surface which is vertical gradually gradually it goes down by the erosion and become horizontal then the surface cycle is completed the surface is penny plane and we can see in the figure the 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 remains this is the tamil nadu say sevroy hill jawadi hill nallamala palkonda velikonda this the once the height were more than 4000 5000 meter and today is the plane this plane is penny plane and the residual you can see in the figure that is the the relict surface the evidence the imprints this is called monod knock this this rock is monod knock rock get found in the history then the second example of the erosion surface is a endrumpf. Endrumpf was Chungen. The endrumpf surface, this term endrumpf was coined by Walter Pink. Pink has described the erosion 
with the slope replacement, with the slope retreat. And finally, the surface become featureless. So Walter Pink has also divided the complete cycle in three parts. Number one, the place, the point where upliftment takes place called primarum. Then the first stage of cycle, primarum, it's beginning from the primarum. So the different erosion surfaces, different erosion stages developed by Peng describes in the young stage, in the young stage, which is called Afasti Jinde. Afasti Jinde in Tukilung. So describe Afasti Jinde means waxing, very fast upliftment. So in the first stage, upliftment is higher than erosion. Second stage is Gleek farming. In the Gleek farming, rate of erosion and the rate of upliftment both are equal. Then coming to the third one called Abasti Jinde. In the Abasti Jinde, in the Abasti Jinde, the slope, the slope erosion becomes slow and because of the re reducing the slope. In third stage, there is no endogenic force. Only exogenic force influence over a long time, long time of erosion and at the end, at the end, the surface become ground surface, horizontal, and that was termed by Endrumpf by Walter Peng, and the residuals, residuals called Inselberg. You can see in the figure, this is one, ex one example of the, the residual of the ground after the completion of the erosion. This is Endrumpf, Endrumpf and the small, small hill or Inselberg, Inselberg hill. So Penny Plain and uh, Endrumpf are the major erosion surfaces largely found on the earth. Then the third one, third erosion surface called Paddy Plain. Paddy Plain, now I will describe the Paddy Plain. You can see this model based on the uh, L.C. King model of the Paddy, Paddy Planation, the process of Paddy Planation. You can see in the figure A, there are four slopes. Slope number one called waxing slope, crest, waxing slope. Slope number two called free slope. Free slope, it is vertical, no residuals found there. So it is free from the sediment called free slope. Then third, the slope of accumulation, linear slope. Accumulation, where the, the surface is from one slope one, slope two, the sediments get accumulated as slope number three, or linear slope. And finally, number four is concave slope, which is the valley. Valley is there. So the erosion over the slope number one, waxing slope, erosion over the slope number two, that is free slope, continues and deposition over the slope number three. Therefore, this process goes longer geological time and gradually, gradually through the process of erosion, through the passage of time, through different stages, the slope number one and slope number two completely disappears, eroded away. Then the surface you can see as slope number one and two is vertical. So vertical surface, vertical crust eroded away. Now see the figure B. In the B, slope 1 and 2, vertical portion is no more. It is eroded away through the process, through the process, through the passage of time. And then the surface 
become horizontal from vertical to horizontal. Then it is called pediplane. So, at present form it become pediplane. So, there are different uh, examples of the pediplane. You can see the surface slope is uh, removed and finally, a surface become horizontal, it converted to the pediplane. The third one, the erosion surface called pan plane. Pan plane largely found in the humid climate and the term pan plane was discovered by Crickme, a gemophologist, famous, famous gemophologist called Crickme, pan plane. So, in the in the pan plane, in the pan plane where river river erosion takes place, river erode its uh, surface bottom and after a long period of time, the continuous erosion passes through the young stage to youth stage, point to the old stage at the look in the figure A in the young stage, the surface is vertical. It develops a gorge, a large valley. Over a period of time, the absolute height, relative height decreases. With decreasing the absolute and relative height, finally, it develops a large size of pan. It converted to this shape of pan, therefore, it is called pan plane. Then, the next erosion surface is exhumed plane, exhumed surface. And I would like to explain through the figure, you can see a an old surface, say about 200 million years, which was covered with, say, very old rock, Dharwad rock, Archean rock, say Kudappa rock, old, old surface. With the passage of time, in the geological time, if the surface, old surface covered with the new rock, covered with the new rock, for example, over the Indian Peninsula, when Indian Peninsula was drifting towards north as a Gondwana land, as an Indian plate, when it was passing over reunion, there were reunion effect. Friends, reunion effects means there were very active reunion lava flow. And when Indian plate was passing over reunion, it was affected by reunion effect and the lava, lava in the form of volcano covered the northern, northwestern part of the Indian Peninsula, covered more than 10 lakh square kilometer area. And that lava trapped the old surface, therefore that is popularly called Deccan trap. So, Deccan area was trapped with the lava. Now, old surface trapped by the young surface. Then later on, over a, over a million years, several million years, the erosion cycle begins due to carrying away the rocks, due to the mass wasting, denudation, erosion. Finally, the new surface no more is eroded away and old surface appear again. The process called exhumed. The old surface which was trapped by the new surface and again it appears due to the erosion of the young surface. So, at the end you can see in the figure at the at the end at the end the surface is exhumed plane, exhumed surface. Several exhumed surfaces are found over South India in the Indian Peninsula. 
then H plane. This kind of surface, H plane, found in the humid climate, and it's largely affected by larger area and longer time through the chemical weathering, chemical erosion, chemical denudation, weathering, erosion, and finally, the surface loses the height due to dissolution. Soluble rocks having chemical reactions like maybe the clustering different chemical solutions and surface gradually goes horizontal to the ground and highly uneven surface developed. It looks like something etched, something etched with the tools, that surface called H plane. Then the Stitelfer, stock work and Stitelfer. For this, I'd like to explain, see the figure, stock work and Stitelfer, the two surface, one having hard rock, other having the soft rock, the erosion takes place, soft rocks rapidly eroded away, it goes down in the B figure. Then in the C, there is again upliftment to the soft rock and it becomes parallel. Then this kind of surface called the stock work, stock work and Stettelfler. This kind of example you can find in uh, Germany area, the black forest area over the fault line area, the old mountain and the young mountain which are uplifted, eroded in Germany. Friends, so these are, these are the planation surfaces, erosion surfaces and going through this lecture, any question, any query, you are most welcome. Thank you.